8 News starts now with your Storm Tracker 8 forecast first. Good Monday evening, everyone. Storm Tracker 8 meteorologist David Williams. We had a beautiful day for today. Highs topped out in the mid to upper 50s, and tomorrow will be similar as well. We are looking at clear skies for this evening. Temperatures continue to fall. Another frigid start across the area into the upper 20s and low 30s. We warm up into the upper 50s and low 60s. A few warmer conditions on the way. We'll break it all down in just a moment. The news starts now. Now on 8 News at 11, a Richmond man is fighting for his life after being shot six times. I just froze. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. What his wife says she wants most as her husband recovers. A string of vandalism impacting Chester businesses. Don't go out and destroy somebody's property because, you know, we work too hard for it. We speak with business owners who are demanding someone be held accountable. A new era begins at UVA. Why this job was the right fit for Tony Elliott. That's coming up on 8 Sports at 11. 8 News starts now with breaking news. Tonight we're following several breaking stories in our area. Eight news crews were on scene alongside heavy police presence in both Richmond and Chesterfield. Thanks for watching 8 News at 11. I'm Eric Phillips. I'm Deanna Albritton. We start tonight with the death investigation in the city's south side. Details remain limited at this time, but we do know the victim was found with obvious signs of trauma near the Commerce Market in Delhi on Commerce Road around 7:30 tonight. There is no suspect at this time. If you have any information, contact Richmond Police. About one hour earlier, RPD responded to a shooting call on Red Street. Officers found a man shot in the hand and leg. He was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. And about 15 minutes before that in Chesterfield, rescue crews responded to a crash on Dundas Road. We're still working to get more information about what happened, but as you can see, several emergency crews responded. New tonight, the wife of a man shot over the weekend wants justice as her husband fights for his life in the ICU. She is replaying the night it happened over and over as she says she heard the shots. 8 News reporter Olivia Jaquith sat down with her this evening. And Olivia, how is the family doing tonight? Well, Eric, Deanna, Shamara Barham Penn tells me she's, of course, grateful that her husband is alive, but is also very worried about their family. She tells me she was just inside the house, not far from where this happened, and is concerned those bullets could have hit any one of their children. I heard six gunshots. He was shot all six times. A wife's terror. I just froze. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. After gunfire rang out in Richmond's East End Saturday afternoon. I didn't really think nothing of it at first because, like I said, it's not irregular to hear, you know, gunshots in this type of area. But then, you know, when, I, when it's someone you know, it's different because it's like, my kids have to live here. Police say a man was rushed to the hospital over the weekend after they found him at the corner of North 21st Street and Fairfield Avenue, suffering from gunshot wounds. Shamara Barham Penn says that man is her husband, Raekwon Penn. I found myself happy one minute, thinking like, okay, he's okay, he's good. And then the next minute I'm crying because he's my best friend. My other half of me. She wants whoever did this to be held responsible before they hurt someone else. I'm trying to potentially spare somebody else the heartbreak of what me and his family is going through. I feel like if this is, you know, your family member, you will want somebody to do something. You will want somebody to help. Now, Penn tells me that her husband is expected to be in the hospital recovering for about another month. And by the time he comes home, she hopes his shooter will have been caught. Anyone with information on this incident is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Live in Richmond tonight, Olivia Jake with 8 News. And we hope he has a full recovery. Olivia, thanks. Cars torched in Chesterfield after vandals ransacked several businesses and destroyed property. Police sent out those startling pictures showing the damage while adding that no one is currently in custody for the crime. 8 News reporter Ben Dennis is live in Chester after speaking to frustrated business owners. Ben, good evening. Hey there, Eric. Good evening. So this car didn't just get back from the demolition derby. You can see the windows are smashed. The mirror is gone. The door handles have been ripped off. This is the glove box laying on the ground and the tires have been slashed. Police don't have anybody in custody. They're looking for suspects, but destructive behavior may be a qualifying personality trait. 
two cars, torched, vehicles ransacked and ruined. A string of vandalism in Chester has business owners feeling disappointed and wanting answers. The first known incident, December 5th, behind Allen Tire on West 100 Road. One of these car fires came incredibly close to hitting the building, but check out the pavement below. Four distinct marks of where burnt rubber remains. Across the parking lot today, a discovery from over the weekend. This Grand Cherokee was treated like a punching bag. Windows are gone. The interior raided. The store supervisor tells me all these cars belong to customers. And down the street, more damage to a truck and trailers belonging to Uncle Dave's kettle corn. Co-owner Kenny Hall described some damage also happening sometime over the weekend. I was, you know, in shock. They, you know, punched a hole in the in the trailer body. Try to pry the door open, which is, you can see that it's loose here. They slashed a tire. Three of his trailers were hit, and he worries his insurance will drop their coverage if it happens again. He has a message for the vandals. Find you a hobby or something. Get you a job, you know? Become an entrepreneur, you know? But don't go out and destroy somebody's property because, you know, we work too hard for it. Nearby, police say yesterday, Sibley's Barbecue had property vandalized and cars there were also damaged. Hopefully this is not a tough case to crack. However, we are not told any suspect information, what they may look like, how old they may be. That is something that the uh, police department and fire departments in Chesterfield are hoping anyone with knowledge will pick up the phone and give them a call about. Call Crime Stoppers. In Chester, Ben Dennis, 8 News. All right, Ben, thanks. Now to the latest on the deadly storms that swept across the south and midwest this past weekend. With at least 50 possible tornadoes tearing through nine states, taking the lives of at least 88 people. Officials say 109 people remain unaccounted for in Kentucky after one of the most severe tornadoes left a trail of destruction more than 200 miles long. The small town of Mayfield is now the epicenter of the nation's deadliest tornado outbreak in over a decade. Officials are beginning to assess the full extent of the damage. One worker at the candle factory that collapsed in the town says he was under 15 to 20 feet of twisted metal. The roof slammed down and then the, then the, the wall came down on top of me. At the very bottom, and my face was sideways. People were asking, where are you, where are you? And I just call out over here. And luckily he made it out alive. Officials expect the death toll to rise though as crews continue to sift through the rubble. Right now, at least nine Red Cross volunteers from Virginia are headed to Kentucky to help with all that recovery from the devastating tornadoes. This video from the Virginia Red Cross shows Richmond area volunteer Ned Warman on his way to bring hot meals and supplies to Kentucky shelters, plus some other volunteers because there are some from Charlottesville, Roanoke, Norfolk and Fredericksburg also that left today to help. And these people went from just sitting back in their chairs, getting ready for Christmas to absolute and total destruction. We're anticipating that this is going to be a multi week or multi month response. The Red Cross is also sending blood to Kentucky. McNamara urges people to donate because supply is still at a 10 year low. And as people across the country begin to digest just the devastation of these deadly twisters, many are asking, how can I help? Leslie Blackwell with the Better Business Bureau has some tips on how to safely donate. Do your homework. Be sure to vet the organization or charity, and if you can, donate on their direct website. Our cameras were rolling as Char Underwood walked into the post office and mailed off her donation with love. I think about what they're going through. It's just so sad, it's so hard, and they need to know that somebody cares and that we're here to help them. The BBB is advising that the best way to give to those in need right now is financial organizations because the organization's not currently having the manpower to distribute physical items. 8 News is taking action tonight for a King George mother frustrated by the governor's pardon decisions. Northam recently pardoned a Colonial Heights woman convicted of murder, but he denied her son behind bars for a lesser crime. Gail Dietz says her son Matthew Mosher committed two armed robberies when he was hooked on opioids. His conditional pardon request was denied. Dietz says her son, a Coast Guard veteran, is now clean, wants to help others, and has served most of his time. Yet 8 News has learned Margaret 
Blair Dacey, who's done just under eight of her 20 years for the 2013 murder of Rusty Mack, is likely about to walk free. It's very frustrating. It's disappointing. It's, it's not justice. And our justice system truly needs to be revamped. Governor Ralph Northam has said there are still some pardons his office is looking at, but state officials did not return our request for comment on this case. New tonight, the $13 million improvement project on Forest Hill Avenue is officially complete. During the construction project, workers added storm sewers, new sidewalks, curbs, bike lanes, and more to the area stretching from Hathaway Road to Powhai Parkway. The road was also expanded from four lanes to five. For a full list of all the improvements during the decade-long project, you can head over to WRIC.com. In your Capital Connection, a new report says Virginia isn't doing enough to prevent young people in the criminal justice system from ending up behind bars again. The 100 plus page review from Virginia's nonpartisan watchdog agency shows the state is successfully keeping more young offenders in the community instead of in correctional centers. However, it says more resources need to be put into rehabilitation programs to prevent minors from reoffending once they're released. Recidivism rates remain high and rehabilitative programs are not adequate. There are also significant fairness concerns. Youth in the system often don't have quality legal representation. On the topic of fairness, the report shows that black youth are two and a half times more likely to be referred to the juvenile justice system. In Richmond, they are four and a half times more likely. Now to a taking action alert tonight. The Richmond City Sheriff's Office is reminding people to be on high alert as scammers continue to look for ways to get their personal information. Callers are identifying themselves as officers or deputies and demanding that residents pay fines by giving their personal information over the phone. If this happens to you, the Sheriff's Office says you should just hang up, adding that they will never ask for money over the phone. We've all been inspired and influenced by remarkable women. Now is your chance to nominate a woman who's made a difference in your life or the lives of others. Head on over to WRIC.com. That is where you have a chance to share her story and enter her in our Remarkable Women contest. The woman you nominate could be featured on 8 News. You have through December 31st to submit your entries. Ahead on 8 News, stop procrastinating and send those holiday packages now. Okay. You're running out of time, I'm just saying. See how soon you'll need to send FedEx and Postal Service packages so that they can make it under the tree in time. Bigger. Thank you, Eric. Tomorrow morning, pretty cold start, upper 20s, low 30s, but another beautiful day up ahead. We'll break it all down in just a moment. Eric. You're watching 8 News at 11, the news where you live. Stay right there. David, Eric, and I will be back in just a moment.
Welcome back to 8 News at 11. I'm Deanna Albritton. I'm Eric Phillips. Time is running out to ship those packages in time for a Christmas arrival. This Wednesday is the last day to send FedEx and USPS ground packages if they're going to arrive by Christmas Day. USPS first class mail needs to be sent by Friday and priority mail needs to be at the post office by Saturday in order to arrive on time. Data Salzman was shipping a package out in Richmond this afternoon and she says she's not betting on it arriving by Christmas. There's been previous delays in shipping things, um, you know, just regular items before the holidays, so hopefully it'll get there in time. Many carriers are still facing staffing shortages and other pandemic related delays, so they advise that the earlier you send your gifts out, the more likely they are to arrive at their locations on time. Now to the latest out of Italy, where at least seven people are dead and several others hurt in a gas explosion that caused multiple buildings to just collapse. Take a look at this drone video out of Sicily showing the devastating aftermath. You can see emergency crews searching through the rubble. They are looking for survivors. Officials were able to find two people alive under parts of a collapsed building. New tonight, a Kentucky man went above and beyond to help those who were impacted by Friday night's devastating tornadoes in Mayfield. Jim Finch drove into the town with a truckload of food and a grill to help feed those who are still reeling from the aftermath. I know they don't have no electricity, so that means they don't have no electric, no restaurants, and no running water, so I just figure I'd do what I can do, show up with some food and some water. You know, we talked a little bit earlier in the show about how difficult it is to distribute actual supplies right now. So this man is someone who obviously understands that and he is bringing those things to the people there. And that is just really incredible. Well, it is. And, you know, food is just an essential part of life. Mm -hmm. And people always like to see food coming anyway. It has a comforting effect. So bravo to him for being willing to extend himself in that way. And Storm Track rate meteorologist David Williams is standing by with the latest on our forecast for the rest of this week. They've certainly suffered a lot in the west and out and in the southern areas. Uh, us here, we felt some effects, but nothing to that extent. Absolutely, Eric. We just saw rain from that same system. No severe weather, which was great news. We just saw some briefly heavy rain, then some lighter rain on the back end of that front making its way through. What it did for us cooled us down pretty significantly, and we are looking at dry conditions over the next several days, folks. Mostly just some high clouds from time to time, but pretty much quite a bit of sunshine and we'll see some starry skies this evening as we go into tomorrow morning. A beautiful sunrise for tomorrow morning, not a cloud blocking it whatsoever. Lows tomorrow morning dropping into the upper 20s and low 30s. Slightly warmer than what we saw for this morning, but pretty close. This morning we started off in the 20s, folks, so make sure to bundle up from head to toe. Make sure to bring that ice scraper with you and keep that handy. We'll continue to warm up from there. We're looking at a beautiful day up ahead for our Tuesday. Temperatures climbing into the upper 50s and low 60s. High pressure dominant over the next several days. So we know what that means. High and dry, calm weather, fantastic weather over the next few days. Definitely on the mild side though. A little bit warmer than where we should be not only today, but tomorrow along for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday. We're dry from Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday though. Chance for a few showers come later on in the day on Friday. Saturday, same case, late day showers going into early Sunday morning. A big temperature swing from our Saturday to our Sunday. Monday, another round of rain on the way. Then we're dry come Tuesday. As far as the back end of our eight day forecast, heading into Christmas, we may be seeing a return to some mild conditions. We'll just have to see. Temperatures continue to fall from here, folks, tomorrow morning. Cold start, upper 20s, low 30s. A beautiful day, though. Temperatures climbing into the upper 50s and low 60s, along with mostly clear to clear skies. Slightly warmer on our Wednesday, 63. Upper 60s on Thursday and Friday. A chance for rain creeps its way in on Friday. Saturday, 71. We go from 71 to 50 on Sunday. Showers wrap up early Monday. We're looking at 48. Another round of showers Tuesday, 51 and dry. Eric? Right. But thanks. Time now for a check on sports. Natalie Calabat here with us and here with the latest. Hey, Nat. Guys, a perfect marriage between Southern Charm and New York City flavor are on the air. The story of Carolee Ashburn and Demetrius Means is coming up after the break. Later tonight on Nightline, we're on the ground in Kentucky meeting the survivors hearing their stories. The woman who was trapped in the candle factory, the incredible video she shared, the man who spent hours in the rubble.
Eight Sports is sponsored by James River Air. Hey there again. Welcome back to Eight Sports. I'm Natalie Calvat. Virginia officially unveiled head football coach Tony Elliott today. Elliott says he waited patiently for an opportunity like this one with the Cavaliers. I chose UVA because I wanted to lead a program that was partnered with the university that had world-class academics. I wanted to be able to recruit the best and the brightest student athletes. When Demetrius Means decided to go to a high school basketball game at Lancaster, he didn't know his life was about to change. 25 years after being asked to join that first broadcast with Carol Lee Means, the two reflect on their careers together. Carol didn't think it was going to work because I'm the New York City kid and he's the Southern guy. And I would say Lancaster instead of pronouncing it Lancaster, the way they do it in the Southern style. It was just perfect combination, as you say, fit like a glove because he would say Lancaster and I would say Lancaster and it would keep everybody listening. So it worked out fine. It, evidently it must have 25 years. Take me through maybe your most memorable moment together. North Dumlin High School played against Washington and Lee High School. And North Dumlin held the ball for the whole first half. The halftime score was 3-0. The kid from North Dumlin hit a three-point shot to end the first half, and they would go into halftime. But the strategy that the coach used was so great that it caused the other team to uh, come right out of their game. That was a special game that made the news, where the coach uh, for Lancaster lived in another county. His son actually played basketball against him. The game was at the very end. Uh, his son is at the foul line to win the game for the team he was, that he coached, his father was coaching. And his son beat his father at the, at the line. So I asked him the next time I saw him, I said, how were things at home that night? He said, very quiet. How all of a sudden did it come together and you guys just have connected and gelled since? You know, for me, it was like magic uh, from the first, first game. And I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about it was Carol let me be me in terms of uh, I'm the basketball analyst, he's the play-by-play -play guy, and he allowed me to do my, my thing as an analyst, and he also allowed me to add some things into our broadcast to make the broadcast better. I started in 1975, and uh, I, I never kept records of anything. I don't have a clue how many games I did. Uh, when we started with him, they kept tabs on every game, stats would have gone crazy, so uh, it, it took us to a brand new level, and it was a marriage made in heaven. It really was. And even though he's still camping out the town, they counted correctly, it, uh, it's still there. Thank you for joining me for 8 Sports and Natalie Calvat. 8 News will be right back. Big news Spider Man is here. Tobey Maguire, Andrew yes. Garfield. Go ahead. 